untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at Blue White Spirits updated with Crimson Vow, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And one of the key cards in the deck is Catilda Dawnheart Martyr, a 3 mana star star whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of permanents we control that are spirits and or enchantments. It has flying, lifelink and protection from vampires. And we can also disturb Catilda out of our graveyard, in which case it turns into a legendary enchantment aura, giving the enchanted creature flying a lifelink protection from vampires and plus x plus x, where x is the number of permanents we control that are spirits and or enchantments. So very powerful top end threat for our all spirit and enchantment deck basically. We're playing three copies of Catilda since after all it is legendary. Then another key card from Crimson Vow is a Geist Light Snare, a 3 mana uncommon instant that costs 1 generic mana less to cast if we control a spirit and also gets an additional 1 mana discount if we control an enchantment and then it counters target spell unless its controller pays 3 generic mana so if you control both a spirit and an enchantment it can be a very powerful counter spell for just a single blue mana which is a lot easier to keep up than 3 mana in a deck that otherwise wants to be curving out and then the other reason to splash blue is the addition of Patrician Geist from Midnight Hunt, the 2-2 Spirit Knight with flying, giving other spirits we control plus one plus one, and spells we cast from our graveyard cost one generic mana less to cast, so that can discount the disturb cost on Catilda. And we also have Twin Blade Geist, which can be disturbed out of the graveyard, otherwise a 1-1 Spirit Warrior with double strike, and the disturb enchantment aura from the graveyard also gives the enchanted creature double strike. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we've got 2 copies of Portable Hole as a cheap removal, exiling target non-land permanent if the opponent controls with mana value 2 or less until the Portable Hole leaves the battlefield. Now not an enchantment, which is a bit of a nombo with our Catilda, but it still synergizes quite nicely with our Stonebinders familiar, a 1-1 Spirit Dog, saying whenever one or more cards are put into exile during your turn, put a plus up a swan counter on the familiar, only triggers once each turn. So we've got a lot of removal that can exile opposing creatures, so the familiar can pick up some plus one counters, and we've got some other hidden synergies that can also end up giving the familiar additional counters. Then we also have the full playset of Usher of the Fallen as a 2-1 Spirit Warrior that can boast for 1 and a white if it attacked this turn to create a 1-1 white Human Warrior creature token. Then at 2 mana we've got Circle of Confinement as another new addition, an enchantment removal spell exiling target creature and opponent controls with mana value 3 or less until the circle leaves the battlefield. So this actually synergizes with Catilda and our Geist Light Snare while also helping us grow the Stonebinders familiar. Then we've got the full playset of Clarion Spirits, a 2-2 creature saying whenever we cast our second spell each turn, create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying. So those spirit tokens will definitely benefit from our various anthem effects. And besides our two copies of Patrician Geist, we also have the full playset of Rally the Ranks, an enchantment saying when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, which is going to be spirit in our case. And creatures we control of the chosen type get plus one plus one. So Rally the Ranks not only gives our entire team a plus one plus one bonus, but it also counts as an enchantment to help grow Catilda by one more, it discounts our Geist Light Snare, and most importantly it gives us a permanent that can stay in play even after the opponent casts a sweeper effect if we failed to counter it. So against a Meat Hook Massacre for example, a very popular card in standard right now, we'll still have some leftovers in play to make it easier to rebuild. And then the plus one plus one bonus from Rally the Ranks also synergizes very nicely with the double strike from Twin Blade Geist. And then we also have two copies of Fleeting Spirit rounding out our two drops. A 3-1 Spirit from Crimson Vow can pay a white mana and exile three cards from our graveyard to give it first strike until end of turn. And we can also discard a card to exile Fleeting Spirit and to return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So that way we can maybe save it from a removal spell. And in matchups where the opponent has a lot of removal and sweeper effects, there's usually a few cards that aren't particularly useful, like Portable Hole and Circle of Confinement typically don't have a lot of targets, so we won't mind discarding them to the Fleeting Spirit. And then the Fleeting Spirit can also exile cards to help grow the Stonebinders familiar. 
And then a topping off her curve, we've got, of course, Catilda, and then a full playset of Skyclave Apparition, a 2-2 spirit that when it enters the battlefield exiles up to one target to non-land, non-token permanent you don't control, with mana value 4 or less. So a great removal spell stapled onto a creature, and if the opponent manages to deal with the Apparition, they'll get an XX Illusion Creature token, where X is the mana value of the exiled card. And then, of course, exiling still works with the familiar nicely, and nowadays we don't see a ton of copies of Ren and Seven, which is one card that can punish a card like Skyclave Apparition since it cannot deal with creature tokens, but since Ren and Seven has kind of dipped in popularity recently, the value of Skyclave Apparition has gone up again. And then of course we've got our Guy Light Snare, which we can hopefully cast for just a single blue mana, and then our two copies of Patrician Geist. Then a mana base, only 23 lands, since we don't have a ton of mana sinks besides the few copies of uh, Catilda and Twinblade Geist that have Disturb, and maybe the occasional Boson Usher. We do also have two copies of Cave of the Frost Dragon, which can turn into a 3-4 dragon creature with flying, and then eight basic planes, five basic islands, and the blue-white dual lands with Deserted Beach and the blue-white pathway. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Get to curve out, and we've got a bit of interaction. And then if we find any of our anthem effects, that will be great. And of course, our counter spell would be a welcome addition, especially against blue red, which points towards maybe an epiphany or is it control deck. Now we cannot counter the hole breaker at seven mana, but countering an Alrun's epiphany would be a big game. Right, and there's our guy's light snare. For now, play Fleeting Spirit, which can also dodge a removal spell by discarding. Although currently no terrible cards in hand, I guess Skyclave might not have a ton of targets. But I'm gonna bounce the spirits. So I could discard just to keep it in play. That keeps up the pressure. And at the end of the day, it's a one-for-one one trade since the opponent used uh, a bounce spell. They might have wanted to cast this in their end step so that the Fleeting Spirit wouldn't come back until later, because it comes back at the beginning of the next end step, so if they cast it in the end step, I would not have been able to attack with it. But now I'm liking attack for three. Don't know if I need to keep up Geist Light Snare just yet, so I'm just going to play another Fleeting Spirit, and then might as well play Usher, even though... I might want to keep some stuff in hand to discard to the Fleeting Spirit. Of course, a disturbed creature like Twinblade Geist is perfect. So hopefully nothing too devastating happens here. And now we've got a nice amount of pressure plus a counterspell in hand. Could even boast with Usher if I wanted to. So damage happens. And now the question is, do I boast? If I do boast, I'm forced to also play out my land if I want to keep up Geist Light Snare. Which might be reasonable, because that would present lethal next turn. So we'll boast. And then if they cast like a 5 mana sweeper we can counter it and just win the game. Goldspan Dragon gets countered. And that should be game. Another neat trick we could have potentially pulled off is discard the Twin Blade Geist to our 2-drop here just to put it in the graveyard. Although, again, we need to make sure that we activate it before the end step so it actually can attack in our turn. And then we can disturb the Twin Blade Invocation, giving one of our creatures double strike to give us a bit more damage if needed. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Now the mana is actually a little bit awkward if I want to curve out perfectly. So maybe we skip the one drop Stonebinder Familiar. And then by keeping it, it also becomes easier to maybe double spell for Clarion Spirit. And then I can guarantee play two drop into three drop. All right, up against another mono white tech, presumably. So... Yeah, I don't mind playing Clarion Spirit here as it can block the Escort. Don't expect it to get removed unless they've got Portable Hole. And then next turn I can go 
double spell with Fleeting Spirit and Familiar, perhaps. Oh, it's going to be a Luminar Aspirant. Puts counter on itself. Ooh, another Clarion Spirit. Don't mind if I do. So glad I held on to my one drop. Now Catilda's going to be pretty decent in the matchup if it doesn't get exiled. And don't want to attack since we would be trading for an escort, basically. And then Guy Light Snare could also be key. Although leaving up the mana for it is going to be tricky. Another escort. So we would love to find one of our Anthem effects to pump up our team. Not sure. Yeah, I guess we'll double spell again here. And then... I guess we'll start attacking with our tokens, even though if I draw an Anthem effect, our spirit tokens could become better than the opponent's, but they could also start putting counters on it. And then hopefully we can force the opponent to use removal they have on what's already in play. And then Catilda's going to be huge and hopefully can go unanswered. Fleeting Spirit can also grow the familiar, but we have to be careful with the timing because it only grows in our turn. Ooh, Protector Shield. Yeah, that's pretty good against our Swarm of Spirit tokens which now won't be able to deal any damage, so we're relying quite heavily on Catilda. Circle of Confinement is still decent here. I'll have to tap out for it because of Protector Shield, but I can exile the Luminarch Aspirants. And then Snare in the future will only cost one mana, so then I can maybe play Catilda with Snare backup in case they have removal for it. So we're going all in on Catilda pretty much. Don't really have an answer to Protector Shield other than I guess Skyclave Apparition. Opponent's got their own Skyclave, goes after Stonebinder, surprisingly. I guess they're worried about the Fleeting Spirit growing it. That's fine. Was kind of expecting them to get back Luminarch Aspirants. Clarion Spirit attacks. I'll take it for now. And then I would love an Unsamped Land here. Alright, Skyclave Apparition works. Can exile the Protector Shield. Although, let me double check here. Another permanent you control. So the shield itself doesn't force me to pay the tax. So that's gone, and now my spirits can attack again. Anything else want to attack? Could get more aggressive and send double Clarion Spirit too. It's probably fine. Don't think I'm trading the one toughness creatures for escort. And could see a double trade situation maybe. Nope, just a trade there. Alright, so I'm liking my position, especially if we can play Catilda with Snare Backup, although their opponent does have a fair amount of mana available. Brutal Cathar is their last play. They would have been able to pay for Snare, but now I'm glad we can play Catilda and uh, be less concerned about it getting removed. Clarion Spirit attacks, so I could double block and then they could make Clarion Spirit gain Indestructible and Life Link. And then I could save the Fleeting Spirits by discarding Snare, which kind of has lost most of its value now. Or I can just take four.
Can maybe make that play in the future to prevent our opponent gaining life with Clarion Spirits. Alright, we'll be able to keep up Snare. I think it's still worth it to keep that mana available. Another play we could have also made is discard Catilda with a Fleeting Spirit, just so we can disturb it right away to get kind of an immediate effect from the enchantment. But for now, this seems good enough. A nice 8-8 flyer. And hopefully they don't top deck another Brutal Cathar or Skyclave Apparition. And we'll attack for 3 here. Alright, let's see if they can top deck their way out of it. With only one card in hand, they wouldn't be able to trigger Clarion Spirit to make a Chum Blocker for Catilda. Although I guess there is Cave of the Frost Dragon that could be animated. Alright. They transform their Werewolf. Twin Blade Geist. Oh boy. So what I could do is discard my Twin Blade Geist to Fleeting Spirit so I can disturb it onto Catilda. The only problem I guess is Cave of the Frost Dragon could still Chum Block. But that might be worth it. And then the 1-1 one, one tokens get to attack as well. I gain a ton of life as well. So let's go for it. A cute C play here. So this forces my opponents to animate Dragon to block, so my author flyers can get in there. And then now the Geist Light Snare could actually counter a 3 mana removal spell from the opponents now that they lost the land. Monk is fine. And Code Spell Cleric, so that's gonna make a Chum Blocker with Clarion Spirits. Do I want to intervene here? Because their opponent could put the counter on the token and then make it indestructible with Escort. But I guess they can just pay for Snare, so... Alright, this is gonna buy them a couple turns. Interesting. Opponents grows a clarion spirit. I guess they would just want to be able to give it lifelink and gain more life. But what I could also do is jump with fleeting spirits and then uh, essentially flicker it by discarding snare and then our opponent wouldn't be able to gain any life. But I don't think I need to make that play right now when a snare is still potentially useful. And we'll see if they sack the escort. Now I guess our opponent will be able to transform back Brutal Cathar, so that's gonna exile Catilda. So the game's not over yet, and we could actually be in a bit of trouble now. Still have my 1-1 tokens to attack with. Ooh, never mind. There we go. Skyclave Apparition. Clean answer to Brutal Cathar. Get my Catilda back. And we should be back in the driver's seat. And another Skyclave Apparition can go for Clarion Spirit, I guess. Alright, GG's. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. The islands could potentially be a bit of a hindrance early on if we want to double one drop. But against a black deck, Geist Light Snare should carry its weight here. Concealing Curtains, alright. Now that we drew the planes, it's perfect. We can play Stonebinder and Portable Hole the Curtains. And then next turn I could play Rally the Ranks and keep up a 1-mana Geist Light Snare.
So red black, kind of a mid rangey looking deck, perhaps. There's some powerful dragons they could have. Right, Florian, also a solid creature. So do I want to Skyclave Apparition it? Seems reasonable. There's the risk of a Meat Hook Massacre for two next turn, wiping my board. Although I guess never mind, we would still have a 3-3 Familiar left. So, sure. And then next turn hopefully we can leave up Geist Light Snare. It's gonna be Kalein. That's acceptable, so perfect circumstances here. We've got the board pressure going. We're head on board, and uh, I can leave up a counter spell for one mana. And if our opponent taps out for a sweeper, they're just going to be dead. So highlighting the advantage over mono white of having access to a key counter spell here. Of course, there's a few downsides to splashing a second color but when people are gunning for mono white as one of the tier one decks in the format and are packing more sweepers in their main decks having that one mana counter spell is incredibly valuable on to the next one all right we're on the draw don't think i can keep a one lander especially when our one land comes into play tapped all right, this is a little bit better. Still not ecstatic about it, but probably can't afford to mulligan to five. And then we've got a curve of Stonebinder into Twinblade Geists. A little bit light on ways to exile to growthy familiar, but double Geist Light Snare could be useful too. Ooh, Jadar, Ghoul Collar. So. Fine offering the trade here. And then we'll play our Geist. Opponent actually accepts. That's fine. Could mean they have another copy in hand. Night Witch. Night Witch, I don't mind exiling with a Skyclave. Opponent stuck on two lands, so they definitely want Night Witch to die to get environmental sciences. And then uh, can exile its attack, and then next turn play Rally and have a 1-mana Geist Light Snare available. While increasing our pressure significantly. Another Eye Twitch. Alright, Sir so will get to jump and learn, unless we draw a Circle of Confinement. So we'll keep a blue mana. And then we still have a 1 mana snare available. So while sure the opponent stuck on two lands, we also kind of helped our own cause by exiling the Eye Twitch. Felstinger would draw two, probably worth countering given that we have a second snare in hand. And then question is whether or not I want to play out my land in case we draw like a fleeting spirit it could be useful to keep that one in hand. On the other hand we also have a cave in play that might need more lands. So sure we'll play an extra land out. And yeah for opponent taps out for a four drop we can kill them on the way back. Perfect. Exactly seven damage. And there we have it, some exiling removal and some well-placed counter spells get the job done. All right, we're on the play with a keepable, if maybe unexciting hand. Not the best curve, no one drop, but uh, I guess I'll just play the beach for turn one, turn two. Close call between Fleeting Spirit and Twinblade Geist. Given that we're up against presumably blue-red control, I think I prefer Fleeting Spirit, which we can save from removal. And now Circle of Confinement is a card we're 
probably not going to want to cast unless they present the uh, two mana dragon egg. And then Rally the Ranks could let us cast Snare for one mana. Although I might still want the extra pressure from Twin Blade Geist. On the flip side, if we play Rally first, the opponent won't be able to exile our creatures with another Spike Field Hazard potentially. So that's certainly relevant. And I don't think we need to counter anything just yet. So I'm kind of liking Rally the Ranks plus Stonebinders Familiar here. And we'll see if they have a response. Uh, they have another hazard, so we'll save the Fleeting Spirits, discarding Circle. Actually, probably missequenced here. If I played Familiar first, then um, I guess they might have still cast the Spike Field in response, so probably wouldn't have mattered too much. Although there's a small chance they would have let it resolve, and then uh, Familiar could have picked up an extra plus one counter. So, we've got a nice amount of pressure, safe from another one damage effect, and of course important to have that counter spell available. So we'll hit for six. Fleeting Spirit could further grow the Stonebinders as well. So, don't hate discarding the Twin Blade so we can maybe disturb it later. And then just cast the Clarion Spirits. Really want to keep Geist Light Snare for a more impactful play for more opponents. Like a Sweeper or an Alron's Epiphany at some point, although might be able to present lethal before then. Another Snares, excellent. So I won't be able to tap out for Twin Blade Geist, Disturb. Opponent's got another interactive spell in hand, deciding what to target. Maybe a Divide by Zero to bounce Rally or one of our creatures. Alright, that's fine. Didn't think I need to counter that since I can just replay Clarion Spirit and still have Snare available. Of course, there comes a point at which we have to deploy the Snare to make use of it. But if I tap out now for Snare and our opponent untaps and casts like a Burn Down the House, I might regret it. So if they cast environmental sciences, do I counter? Probably not. Even though I could present lethal if I do and they don't have any other interaction. Alright, windfall's an easy counter. And our opponent's dead, unless they have, like, a Fading Hope. And there we have it, so, yeah, some nice early pressure, bit of synergy between Stonebinder and Fleeting Spirit, and then Rally the Ranks, not only increasing our pressure, but also providing an important enchantment for Geist Light Snare. So, yeah, we got to see the deck in action in a wide variety of matchups, and Geist Light Snare was definitely quite impressive, being able to counter those key plays in almost every single matchup. Now, of course, against a deck like Mono White, for instance, it's going to be one of the weaker cards in our deck, especially if we're on the back foot, opponent curves out, has a lot of early pressure, then Geist Light Snare is going to be rotting in our hands, and by the time we can maybe cast it, the opponent will have enough mana to pay for it. And then every now and then you might run into uncounterable threats, like the Holebreaker Horror, which we cannot counter with our Snare, but hopefully we can close out the game before then, and still counter some other card in the process. So while there are downsides to splashing a second color, making your mana base less consistent, losing access to Faceless Haven of course is a big one, and overall we might be missing some of the more powerful cards out of the Mono White deck, there are certainly advantages to this strategy as well. If you need to counter those sweepers that are picking up in popularity because of Mono White being one of the best decks, as well as just, uh, of course, as we saw in the matchups, countering one of those big 4 and 5 mana plays, so yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.